Hi, I'm Tom Hayes. This is Upbeat, and we're back with Bobby Seibel. Uh, what did we leave off? I think we it doesn't okay. matter. Pick it up where you we, want. We, we were on the colonoscopy. We're talking about me. Well, that's right. We were on the colonoscopy. How could you not have a great day? <laughs> the colonoscopy, no. the, the thing that... Ah, the health. <clears throat> well, I want to... You, you, you're amazing we, because... We, we want to... Don't be repetitious, because I forget after that. At my age, I'll repeat the same stuff. People do that to me now. They go, you said that to me yesterday. You told it to me two days ago. And I'm start repeating. I really, did I ever tell you? And I go, oh, my God. Sometimes I make phone calls. You ever do that? You forget who you're calling? And the person answers. You go, who's this? You go, no, no. I, it's coming close. Coming close, or I'm going to need Well, let's some. talk about, you brought, we'll get back to the kids. Yeah. Cancer, but the phone. Now, you, you have a thing with your phone. Everybody knows you. And your phone, you know. Okay. okay. I was the last, I don't know if you're going there. Because you're cheap. I'm the cheap. I hate, I, let me just say something about texting and cell phones. How much of that going on while you're driving is critical information that has to be done at that second? I would advise, since I ride a motorcycle, <laughs> it's a public service announcement. Don't text and BS on cell phones while I'm on two wheels. People are not looking. Years ago, when a person would be, you know, swerving down the road, it was a drunk driver. Now it's a text, right? Now it's either, right? But now it's combination, a drunk texter going down the road. Oh my God, oh my. No, I'm not a fan of the cell phone thing. I was the last comic in Boston to get a cell phone. Yes. I fought it, I fought it, and then finally some folks uh, in, man, in, the man, in the comedy manager said, like, you lose a lot of work. And that was it. I got a cell phone. It took me like about a year and a half to figure out how to push buttons on that. I am not technologically. I went to a Catholic school. I can speak Latin. But uh, I don't know how to run machinery. I mean, I'm not a machine <laughs> person, you know? I mean, it. I can change the oil on my motorcycle, but when it comes to like... Running computer? I don't have one. People say, well, you have email? I said, no, I got a female. She's in Beverly. But I got no email. And people say, how can you stay uh, like uh, on top of everything? I really don't care. I read a book in the subway. I look around and everybody's wired in. And I'm reading a book. It's got paper. It was made from a tree. It's not that whatever that me mechanical book. And I'm like, my God. I'm so glad I grew up in the 40s. I mean it. I, you know, I just, I can't get used to this fanaticism about technology. You know, you get out, you really, I was on the subway yesterday, and I'm looking around, I was the only one reading the book. Everybody's <laughs> earth calling robots, earth calling robots. We become robots, man. Nobody communicates. I'm probably going, hi, hey, I'm here, I'd like to talk to you. And... <laughs> And I said to a kid once with the text thing, what are you doing? They're playing games. <laughs> okay, why don't you try Sudoku? <laughs> I don't know. You know, you get older, you look back, you know, I wish it was, I wish it was. I don't know, I wish there were party lines. Because we had party lines, you had four people, you hear the Greeks say, Really, then you hear some little weird stuff too. I love you. It's like porno in the 50s. <laughs> We never had porno in the 50s. You know what porno was in the 50s? Playboy. <laughs> and the girls were dressed. And porno, for us, other than the, uh, the, the, the Playboy, was National Geographic. The natives of New Nigeria. That was the bare boobs in those days. And now it's like a medical journal. Hey, there it is. There's nothing, no imagination. It's like a medical journal. My God. There's nothing left to think about. It's just... Well, you did that so well. When you did this, I could, I could see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You know, I'm telling you, we're obsessed with communication. I mean, you ever think of, like, I love to go in the woods, because I'm a pedophile. No, I love to go in the woods 
I grew up in Lynn, and there's a reservation called Lynn Woods, 2,000 acres. You can go in there and get in the center of that reservation, and you can get lost. Just get lost. Look up at the clouds going by next to a brook, you know, and then you come out, and the minute you get in your car, they're in your back seat, right? <laughs> With the gas right to your back seat. It's a 30 mile, you're doing 120. I think there's a problem. You slow down a little bit. People are right on your case, you know what I mean? And I never thought I'd be talking. But at this point now, when you get to be this age, when we were young, 20 years old, we'd be driving to the Cape. We made it from Lynn to Hyannis once in 40 minutes. Yes. And that was with a case of beer. <laughs> And a Plymouth Belvedere. I mean it with this lunatic. His kid name was Phil Gilbright. He's passed on. He was, we'd made it in 40 minutes. From and, out of it, and we didn't care. And, you know, I had a, you ever hear of a common gear? Yes. The old common gear convertible. Yes. For anybody, it's a Volkswagen that was like a poor man's Porsche. And, <laughs> and, and we would drive to the Cape every weekend. I worked at the GE and we'd drive to the Cape. And the top down, case of beer in the back. And I'll never forget this. You know those orange cones on the highway? The nut that I was with was Jimmy Monroe. We stopped at a site, and we put the two orange cones on our head. <laughs> and we're driving to the Sagamore Bridge or whatever, and we're driving, and people are screaming, laughing, and all of a sudden, <laughs> it's the state police. I swear to God, this state police officer, get out of the car. He was holding himself laughing. He come up to the car, he goes, just put the damn cones on the highway, get that. Never said a thing about the band, you know, we were empties rolling back and forth. Really, Tommy, that was in the 60s, folks. You can't do that anymore, you know? It's a whole different world. And like I say, I'm very glad that, um, you know, I never inflicted damage on a human being, I mean, uh, in a vehicle, you know what I'm saying? But, um, no, like I say, back to the gratitude thing. I hate to say I'm grateful, but I'm grateful to be here with you. And I mean it, it's fun to let me talk for three hours. <laughs> you sit there like a mute. Oh, God. Oh, have you heard the latest of health? I got an eye problem. Did I tell you this? I got sideswiped by a truck. <laughs> December 7th of 010. December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. Only I got bombed. I'm in Salem, Mass. Did I tell you this? I got sideswiped by a truck. Went down. True story, folks. I'm not lying, and this is all true. Went down. And um, the man who sideswiped me came running back. He says, are you okay? This is, did I tell you the whole thing? I says, yeah, I'm fine. Yesterday, he, you told he me. He says, <laughs> <laughs> no, an hour ago. He says, he says, uh, he says well, there's 100 bucks and my business card. I'm late for a meeting, and he took off. And the Salem police, Salem, Massachusetts police, come up to the site. Where's the guy who hit you? I says, well, I told him he could leave. And the cop went, are you nuts? It's an accident, you jerk. You should be in the hospital and check. And there was a nurse off duty from the hospital. She said, you got to go in the emergency I'm okay. True story. And the police are trying to debate with me, going, Bob, you got to go and get this checked out. We got the business car. We'll check on the guy who sideswiped you. I convinced the police I was all right, but now I'm in adrenaline shock. You know, you're banging on a freaking highway there. So I convinced the police to lift the bike. We three of us get the Suzuki 1000. Talk about poor, cheap Lynn. Suzuki 1000, 1981, with 113,000 miles. A mechanic will not fix it. He says, you bring it in, I'll put gas on, I'm gonna blow it up. It's making my business look bad. Nobody wants to bring their bikes in. He fixes that. So <laughs> when I ride with my friend, there's a holly, he goes way in the back, a mile away, don't come near me. So now, I convinced the police, the bike goes up vertical, the bars are bent, <laughs> mirrors are shattered. I get on the bike, kick it, start riding down the street. Uh, a mile or less, I have a seizure. <laughs> I go off the bike in Peabody, I'm rolling down the street with the bike, hit a curb, bounce off. I'm <laughs> swearing to God, ladies and gentlemen. I jump off the, off the, the green, right? I get up again. <laughs> And I'm walking around again, still in the, now I'm in dual adrenaline shot. And there's a young police kid <laughs> officer at a, at a gas company work site. And he comes running up. He goes, send an ambulance to such and such a street. <laughs> True story. And I'm standing there like this, doing Rocky. <laughs> da, da, da. The pipe's laying there. The gas is coming out of the tank. And the police kid says to me, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm okay. Just help me lift the bike. I got to get back to my garage. So... He goes like this, cancel the ambulance, he doesn't want it. And then he goes, what? What? He goes, you're not the same guy. Just 
what I would have him do. I goes, yeah. He goes, pal, but you got to slow down. I had my comedy DVD in my jacket. And I says, I was going to deliver this DVD to somebody. I had the comedy DVD. I says, listen, I said, I'm a comedian. I work around in New England. Here's my DVD. When I drove away, this cop was like this. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> so what happened was that, I won't get into the thing, but <clears throat> I feel strong, but we won't get into that, but I got a little damage to the eyes. <laughs> and so little concussion and hemorrhages in the eyes. So I said, pretty soon I'll be in front of Walmart with a white cane and a cup <laughs> and a monkey with a red hat. You know, how about a few pennies? <laughs> Do stand up, is it working? <clears throat> all the, you know, the funniest stuff is the true stuff. <laughs> you can sit there and write scripts all day. And then you go like, that's funnier than the script, right? You know what I mean? Because we've been laughing since we met each other. <laughs> From the day I met this crazy man <coughs> and his... If you ever want to see a funny guy on stage, go see Tommy Ace, and I mean it sincerely. I'm just doing this because I'm mentally ill. <laughs> Tommy does it because he's a professional comedian. <laughs> they, they haven't got a net big enough to catch me. Oh. I'm just on, oh. I'm on work release right now, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> but they won't let me in Brooksby. They said, no, no, we got a waiting list. You're not on it. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, if these poor people have no idea how much material I still have left. <laughs> we haven't even got there. All you folks ought to be glad I'm not your neighbor. How'd you like to see this in the morning? Hey, how you doing? I'm your new neighbor. <laughs> you know, this is... Oh, yeah, go, go, ahead, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you know, it, it's, <laughs> people prejudge. You know what I mean? When people see me uh, facially, I got the face of a mass murderer in, in the heart of Mother Teresa because I'm, I'm a wuss. But when people, you know, the other day they were, I was at the train station in Beverly. True story. And all these kids were uh, giving out like uh, Nutrigrain candy bars to the people getting on the train. They went right by me. And really, here's a Nutribar. And they saw me and they went, don't give me a Nutribar. Don't attack. You know, because I got that face of a potential mugger, you know. I, you know, really, it's tough to go through life looking like you're, like, on the, on the edge. I used to hitchhike. Nobody picked me up. Look. People go, nah, that's okay. That was the blizzard of 78. I, was... <laughs> I got to come out of my shell. <laughs> Yeah, you're 70. It's about time to come 70. out of show. Huh. You know what it is? 70 from the neck down, from the neck up. <laughs> 15. I get zits here and varicose veins here. I don't, I don't know what to do. Help me, please. Clarissa still <coughs> here and Ben Gay here. Oh. Help me, folks. It's, <laughs> and I actually go out with this woman who thinks I'm cool. This girl, Diana. She's been, like I said, she's been going out with me for a uh, long well, time. You didn't tell the story how that all of us. Okay, I, we did it, but I'll do it here. Yeah. We were dating when we were teenagers, and uh, she went to a, an academy up in Salem there, Critians, and uh, I was at St. Mary's, and I don't know how we met drinking, you know, you meet <laughs> girls, and, and we went out for a year or so, back and forth, you know, and uh, then uh, the girls, 1960, had had a parrot, had a, you know, the rings, and I said, oh, no, I got a career in alcohol and drug abuse <laughs> and, uh, as, a, as a client, not as a counselor. And so I went on and pursued my career, and she got married, had three beautiful kids, and uh, 04, 44 years after we split, the phone rang in my condo, and I picked it up. I said, hello. And she goes, hi, Bobby, it's Diana. And I said, I knew you'd come crawling back. <laughs> you give them enough time to think it through. <laughs> And I found out why she goes out with me, because she saw the way I dress, and she show knew. Them, show them, sit hey, up, show them. I cannot, look at these. These have been stitched by a guy named Zeke. Look at these things. I will not let go of clothes. When you go up poor, I ride a motorcycle with 30-year-old pants. <laughs> and I drive a Hyundai Accent. All the women are going, what's his number? Eight track. Eight track girls, eight track. Forget that. I'm almost into cassettes. <clears throat> We're doing eight track right now. Oh. I, you know, with the technology, DVD, I thought that was a venereal thing. What do you got, DVD? <laughs> penicillin, I'm okay. 
<laughs> HBO, get a deodorant. I don't know. What the hell. Android. I mean, that was in a sci-fi movie. What is all this stuff going on? You lose track. You go to, I go to, a, you know, the communication store. The, what is all this stuff that that Blackberry <clears throat> eat them? <laughs> people, you never see people now when they walk by you. Years ago, when they walked by you talking, they were nuts. Now they're hooked into like, hello, how you doing? They got these things hanging out of their ears. Like, how you doing? I love you. Years ago, when I was in Stop and Shop, two in the morning, before I knew all of to communicate with the things in the ears, a guy was in the cereal aisle, and I said to the manager, I think there's a guy, it was two in the morning, Stop and Shop on Route 1. I said, there's a guy in the cereal, he's talking to himself. And, and the other guy said, no, he's got a thing in his ear. I thought he was having a break. I'm talking to Cheerios, going, you know, I love you. <laughs> I, you know, when I didn't have a cell phone, right? I used to walk around like this. I'd be driving, and people on their cell phones, I used to do like this. Oh. So how long have you been doing comedy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you Thank know. God we don't have to go to commercials. <laughs> you know, the producer. Oh, I, oh, I go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I have, I, I've been sober for a long time, and, and, and I can't mention the group I belong to because they want to be anonymous. But I'll give you a clue, it's not AAA, but they have the same slogan as AAA, sooner or later you'll break down and join us. So I'm at one of my meetings, and these two young kids are sitting there, and they're whispering at the coffee break, Mr. Seibel, Mr. Seibel. And I never heard that since I taught, I taught history at Lynn Classical. I did. I actually taught U.S. history. And these two kids are going, Mr. Seibel. And I went over at the coffee break at the meeting. and goes, how do you guys know me? True story. They said, you were our history teacher at Classical High School. I goes, what are you doing at this meeting? They go, you drove us here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I get to. Uh, are we still got time? Yeah. You know, egos for comedians is a big thing, all right? And one kid come up to me one day, he goes, are you Bob Seibel, the comedian? I went, yeah. He said, were you performing at such and such a club? And I went, no. He goes, I thought you were. The parking lot was empty. <laughs> and I get this, and I love to be dumped on. I said to this old man, I said, you're the father I never had. He pushed me. He says, you're the son I never wanted. <laughs> and I thrive on abuse. Yes. I was on the Appalachian Trail. I finished it in 09, the whole 2,000-something miles. And one day I met a guy, and we're walking for a couple of days together, staying in the shelters. Not the shelters in the city, the shelters <laughs> in the Appalachian Trail. And he starts dumping on me. Within two days, he's insulting me. I goes, how come you're doing that? He goes, you got that kind of face. <laughs> Well, and a lot of the, I know a lot of the romantic stories of how a lot of the women dumped on you. <laughs> my, one of my wives, only oh, two ladies, and one of the wives, I said to him once, <clears throat> true story, the second lady, I said, let's make love by candlelight. You know, she said, blow it out, I can still see your face. <laughs> that hurt. I'm sorry. That hurt. And that's a true story. I brought it up at the divorce court. The judge said, no, we can't use it against that. <laughs> Let's do this every day. <laughs> the, the producer, my cousin, Ed says, yeah. he says to me, does he know what you're going to talk? Are you prepared? <laughs> yeah, we got notes. He's reading off of notes. I said, I said, Ed, don't worry about it. Uh, tell him the story how cheap I am in the Prague at the airport when we're leaving. This is, <coughs> I, this is. <laughs> he, he, he tells me all the time he doesn't care about money. And I, when you see him operate, he watches every penny, every dime. And I said, you care more about money. I said, I think about making it. You think about every dime you spent, and it pains you every dime you spent. It's true. You don't care so much about making it, right? No, go ahead. But it's, it's the... the, the 
we'd be in, we're in Prague and he wants to eat. Was, Tommy, let's grab a couple of pieces, a piece of pizza and, and a Coke, buck and a half. <laughs> Bobby, we're in Prague. I mean, how often do you get to Prague, Bobby? I mean, it's, we can eat pizza and Cokes anywhere. Yeah, but it's a buck and a half. You know? We stayed in Prague. He tells, calls me up and tells me, Tommy, I got a deal. We can stay and go to Prague, 550 bucks. It includes round trip airfare, a week in a hotel, breakfast, half day tour of the city, and transfers. <laughs> but we got to act fast because if we don't get it right away, we'll have to go single occupancy, which is 50 bucks more. <laughs> Uh, and like an idiot, uh, I buy into the. F I'm going, yeah, he's right. That was, we're going to get screwed out of 50 bucks. I got to jump on the double occupancy. 50 bucks more for the week. We could have stayed. But I got to stay with him and, he, and tell him how you dress at night. <laughs> you tell All right. Him. He's got on a Patriots jersey. That's it. <laughs> I said, Bobby, Jesus, you know, I'm going to be here with, for a week with you. What are you doing? What? I said, you don't have any pants on. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's natural. I like to be natural. I said, Bobby. I said, I'm trying best with my, my vision, peripheral vision not to look. <laughs> I said, but this, I got to spend a week with this. Just relax. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> Tell him how. <laughs> for 50 bucks. I had to watch you in a Patriots jersey. Go Tell ahead. Him, no, the one at the airport. All right, so. The Vatax. What the Vatax? He finally breaks down. He's going to buy something. Okay. He's going to buy something. Some so he buy, we egg. buy a, a Fabergé egg. A Fabergé egg. egg. Beautiful Fabergé egg. A hundred, expensive. I couldn't believe you did. Who did you, who did you buy that for? For myself. <laughs> <laughs> nobody worth buying that for. <laughs> so he, $150 for this egg. Now, here's the kicker. The, the, the thing that made him flip was they gave you 25 bucks back in the value added tax, not there, if you went to the airport with this, this piece of paper. So we buy the thing on, say, Wednesday. We're not leaving until Sunday. For every single day that we are there, he is running around Brock <laughs> asking total strangers, excuse me, um, I bought this egg. <laughs> I got the, the tax, the voucher. Where, where, do you, uh, where do you redeem this? At the airport. Okay, when you go in, you go to, yeah, you gotta go through the tickets. Then when you go through the door, it's, it's on the right, it's on the right. Is that where it is? Every single day, policemen. <laughs> Anybody and everybody, I have to, every restaurant, every waiter, he's gotta find out because this 25 bucks. You gotta get this 25 bucks. We, we're ready to go to the airport. <laughs> We're down in the lobby. It's an hour ride through traffic. They had no, no freeways to no, the airport. Right. So he starts <laughs> at, the at the reception desk. <sighs> he asks the, uh, the, 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 who's the concierge, the doorman, <laughs> the taxi driver, the two women we went to the airport with. <laughs> Uh, showing this budget, I'm just, by this time, I'm sick of it. I can't stand it. We get to the airport, he's in line, and, and we were doing a sink. I was in one line, we were just going to see if we could get, you know, to oh, the yeah. and, yours, and he's got the thing out. <laughs> oh, God. Now, the best part is when we get to the airport, I had one, too. Yeah. And it took us an hour through all this traffic, and we get out of the car, and you say to me, I, I start searching. Have you got yours? Have you got yours? <laughs> so I start doing the search, and I realize ah. I don't have mine. No! <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? I said, we got an hour and a half. I'm going back. <laughs> okay, I'll wait for you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like I was going to risk the flight for this 25 bucks. But I believed you. I really oh, thought I said, oh, could give up that money. I went out. You remember the, um, <laughs> down, the down here on 128, the old dance hall. Was it Norm Vega Ballroom or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, it was 1960. <clears throat> I was like 20, 19. And I had this real cute girl in Anna. She was a Greek kid. And I said, want to go dancing tonight? 
And so I had a Vespa, so I couldn't take on the Vespa, but I think <laughs> a bike, we double dated. That's what happened. We double dated. And then and she lived a half a mile from my house. And I said to the three of them, let's have pizza. <laughs> my mother was in New York. She'd go away for a two week thing to visit her sister in Brooklyn. And they were, yeah, pizza, 19 or whatever. There were a couple of pizza piles, not that many as there are. Every three minutes there's a pizza pile. So do you know what I did, being who I am? There used to be a company called Appian Way that made pizzas. Did you ever hear of these things? And it come in a box. So I had one person open the can of paste. <laughs> Somebody else was making a dough, and I never went out with me again. That was the last. We were in my house making pizza, the cheapest. And I saw her at this classical high school class reunion, and she saw me because I did a show that one of the classmates asked me to uh, class of '61 or something like that. And they said, and Anna was sitting there, and I haven't seen her in a hundred thousand years. And she looked at me. She goes, "I'll never forget that night." You were the most unromantic date I ever had. And then to top it off, we're having pizza made in your kitchen. You were the cheapest date I ever went out with. Oh, yeah. And it just goes on through history, you know I mean? Just, oh, it's not going to change. I won't change. For God's sake, I just, it's the, you know what? But I mean, I used to watch my mom after my dad was gone, and she'd be very frugal, for the lack of a better word, for the public, cheap as hell. And I picked that vibe up. I mean, everything I'd watch her all the time, how she up it. When I scrape a pan of soup, there's not one noodle that stays in that pan. I mean it. I'm in there scraping it out with a, you know what I mean? Because I have been brought up like that. You don't <coughs> waste. You know, and when the bills used to come in, I still do it. A gas bill, electric bill, I'd be at the, at the, the building paying it within uh, half an hour. When the mail came, I'd be running. I gotta pay the bill because I gotta shut it off. So that's the, that's the mindset I got as a well, kid. Well, plus you saved on the postage, if you And I saved on the postage, <laughs> I'm telling you. It was amazing. You know, I think about, well, I, you know what, in deference to what goes on today with the throwing away and spending, I'd rather be at that end of the spectrum, you know, holding on to it. Because people today just, when I used to, I can't run the left knee shot, but when I used to run, I used to pick up all the cans on the street. True story. Okay. I pick up cans on the street. We're, we're and, yeah, yeah. We're going to get back to this. Are you having fun, folks? Because <laughs> we are. Stay tuned. We're going to do another, uh, another episode, at least, <laughs> hopefully, with Bobby. Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs>